if you do what I tell you to. But he wasn't worried about them. He was worried about his own life, his own goal, his own prestige, his own seat, his own authority. He knew and understand and understood what Jeremiah was saying. But the cares of the world where he was and the deceitfulness of his riches and his power choked the life literally out of him and put the people in captivity. This will be, these things are written for our example. Let's go here. Let's go to Psalms 20. Psalms 20. So that tells you him being a king, he just definitely wasn't a good shepherd at all. And that's what it is. In fear what other people going to think about you. And like I said, it's, you know, in the beginning, it, you know, in the, in the beginning it was the Sabbath, it was fringes, things like that, dietary law, clothing, and all those things. People look at you, you know, oh, man, he's weird and everything, you know. And that's just how you got to feel. Same thing about this gospel. Y'all talk about, man, doing it. That sound kind of cultures and all that. That's just the way you got to feel. That's the way you got to feel. And that's going to make you sleep at night thinking I'm a fool, an idiot. Fine, I'm cool with that. But I can't be at home like, man, these guys are in the world, man. These guys are my job. think I'm a fool for, for following this word, man. I got to rethink this thing. I don't know, man. This, man, I like these guys. I forget that. Later for them. That's how it is. It's not like these guys. Man, that's, that's it. People want to be liked. And I'm going to tell you, a person that's always seeking approval, a person that always want to be like, one thing I know he's going to be, he's going to be a liar 100%. Because he's going to say things just to make people feel good. They're going to be lies. I ain't got time to lie to you. If you don't like it, man, that's just the way it is. Man. That's why I love my mother, because she didn't lie. I thought I was smooth, man. I told him, girl, such and such call me, tell him I hear, boy, get over here on this phone. I ain't lying for you. Who do you think you is? I almost got my teeth knocked out. I thought I was smooth too. Jennifer on the phone, I'll tell her I here. Oh, you want me to lie for you, huh? Jennifer, he over here, get up on this phone. <laughs> and that's what it was. That's one thing I want to say about parents. Teach your kids not to lie, but then when somebody call them, tell them I ain't here. Yeah, tell them I ain't here. No, I'm gonna beat you for lying, but I want you to lie for me. It was even, it was stronger than that. You tell them, you, you raise them up in a so-called Christian household and Christian principles and all that, and you got these big Santas in, in, in the front of your house. You got Easter rabbits. You at church going on Easter egg hunts. <laughs> and you talking about not lying to people. Not lying. You got teachers who go to school, who teach American history, who been to college, because that's how they get their job. You have to have a master's in English to become an English teacher. A master's in history to become a history teacher. And you go to school and you teach children lies. Christopher Columbus discovered America. You, you know that's a lie. Have the history you read and you know. Because when I went to college, I learned raw, uncut history. And all those things. My, te my history teacher told me in college, listen, we're going to learn some things that you're supposed to learn in high school, but they didn't because of certain things of American curriculum. These are things they had to teach. But now you're in college, it's a whole different ball game taught lies in school. You know what I mean? But everybody wants to go on this, this principle of, you know, truth. You know what I mean? People got to consider what are they saying sometimes if it's a lie or it's truth. Or is it de just deceitful? And this is what we have to consider. Now here we in um, Psalms Psalms 20 verses 6 through 9. Psalms 20 verses 6 through 9. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointing. Uh -huh. he, will, he will hear him from his holy heaven with the same saving strength of his right hand. Uh -huh. Some trust in chariots yes, and some sir. in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. He says some trust in chariots and some trust in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. That's what I think. These are like the, the scriptures that 
like when I read the Maccabees and things like that, when I read the accounts of the first church, these are the sayings that had to be, that had to really dwell upon them to do the acts that they did. They said, listen, some trust in church. It's like saying now, some trust in guns, some trust in cars and money. We're going to trust on the Lord. That's what we're going to trust on. He is our shield and he is our defense. We're not going to, I can't sit and worry about, people been, listen, people been ripping on me all the days of my life I can remember. I've been mocked all the days I can remember. I came up in a time it wasn't cool to be big or dark. You understand? I remember I came up, I remember it was all light skin when I was coming up. Elder Barge and all that stuff. Man, the blackest thing I seen on TV was different strokes. And that was it. That was it. You know what I mean? You had to have the good hair and everything. So big black nappy dude. I was I was I was the butt of jokes. You know what I mean? That's just what it was. So as far as people, you know, as far as far as people talking, you know, about mocking and things like that, you know, that's that's to a real to a real man to a real woman, that's nothing. Cause all it is is talk. If you let something like that eat at you, then you really, you know, you really gotta check yourself and not and not them. And with this gospel, he's letting you know off the muscle to be a fact is that you'll be hated for my name's sake. Didn't he say that? He said you'll be hated and marvel not that you won't be hated for my name's sake. So in essence, if people are really loving you and liking you a lot, you might be on the wrong track. When people freeze up and, and they act funny towards you when you talk about the gospel, you're more or less on the right way of being. When people are like, oh yeah, you're right, yeah, I'm feeling that. I'll mean, be like, for real, you are? But after you really get into it, you need to tell what the entails, you know, that, that, you know. But why you got to be, you said, do you mean all these, what do you mean like that? Y'all, so really, it's really like that, you know. So you really going to do that? Y'all, I really do that? Y'all really, in a, you know. Yeah. Really, you think Christ was really a communist? You really think he was a socialist? You think, that's kind of extreme, man. I was just thinking, yeah. So you mean to tell me Christ wasn't extreme? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying Christ is love. So you think socialism isn't love? No, I don't think, well, why? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what, that's what you have. And they trapped up in this belief because they've never been taught that. They've never been taught, it's never been brought to them, never been brought to them in the right measure. They really don't understand. They're literally ignorant of it. Literally ignorant. That means they just don't know. They really don't know. Now let's go, let's go to Isaiah 5 here. Isaiah 5. Because we can't put our trust in man. We can't put our and our trust in the system. We can't put our trust in these jobs. Can't do none of that. None of it. Everybody knows what's going on in Wisconsin right now, right? How these teachers taking they they taking sick day after sick day because the legislature there are trying to bust up the teachers' unions. Trying to bust it up. You got teachers that's flying down there from all over the nation. To be side by side with them because they feel the effects of what's going on here they're trying to bust up the middle class and they're trying to make this division between rich and poor very wide and open now that's what's going on here and like man so their their job is not guaranteed under them their job is not bringing them comfort even though they're fighting to work and fighting to do their job, and probably something that they love, their job is not even a convenience. That's, that's, that's messed up when your job that you fighting for to keep, you really don't even trust them. But you gotta work. So you gotta fight to work. That's, you know, that's crazy. Here we are in Isaiah 5, let's start at verse one. And we're gonna look at Israel here again. Now will I sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well-beloved have a vineyard in a very fruitful hill, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof, 
and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it. And he also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Mm -hmm. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem, and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could have I done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked at it, should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the heads thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. And I will lay it waste, and it shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more upon it. Uh -huh. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Now at the end of that, could you read that again? For he looked for judgment, but behold, what? Oppression. And for righteousness, and for, behold, what? a cry. You see, this is what the downfall of Israel was. And the downfall of man right now. He's looking for judgment, but behold, oppression. Looking for righteousness, but behold, a cry. Now here you have the nation who was who was tucking out, who wasn't a nation that became a nation. Give law, statutes, commandments, and a land, an inheritance to execute judgment and judgment and to live there. Dug out the wine press, grapes, Israel. Look for to become wild grapes. Now they're the seed of oppression and the seed of, uh, of murderers. So what does he do? He breaks down the vineyard, heads it out, throw them out the land, wipe Jerusalem as a plate, so to speak. Lay it to waste and put up thorns and briars and thistles, enemies from other lands, other countries, now come in and now you're subject unto them, even unto this day. The briars and thorns is, is the same for, for us as them, those slave ships, antebellum slavery, all these things because we forsake the Most High God. Briars, thorns, and thistles have come up and laid waste. That's how it is. Like I said, I grown up in this neighborhood. I, this used to be a beautiful neighborhood 25 years ago. I mean, it wasn't no, it wasn't, there wasn't no, it wasn't any abandoned houses. Every house had an occupant. You had corner stores where people knew your name. You would walk to school. The lady who lived next door to you would be the lunch lady at the school. They didn't have lunch ladies. You had lunch at school and the women that were part of the PTA and part of the school board, they would come in there during lunch and you have lunch. I'm gonna tell you how nice it was. I'm gonna tell you how nice, even though it was nice to me, but even in the 70s, you know, it was still bad for our mothers and fathers, you know. Everybody talk about the good old days when they was a kid, you know what I mean? And every time I bring up the good days, it was a kid. But listen, I'll put you like this how, this, this how things are compared now to then. At lunch, you could go home for lunch. When I was a kid, you could go home for lunch. When that lunch bell rang, brrr, you could walk home and come back to school after lunch. Our brothers and sisters, in here, in Buffalo, New York, and wherever you are in America online, do any of y'all can go home for lunch and come back? I'm talking about, I'm talking about fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth graders. They might not, I, I, down south they might still be doing that, but up here in Buffalo, New York, you ring that bell for us, ain't nobody coming back. <laughs> to leave, leave these kids to their own, on their own, to go home and come back now, then no. But that's how it was. That's how the communities was. But by lawlessness and easing up and everything, and everything becoming so politically correct and all these things, untangled. Now it's, it's, it's out of control, you know what I mean? Now you had a little aunt that, 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 that was homosexual back then, you know what I mean? That's Aunt Judy, you know, she, she lived with her friend, you know, everything like that. You know what I mean? You don't go at it too much. Now, shoot, it's full blown. You know what I mean? You have homosexuality run rampant, you know what I mean? Nobody, see, everybody checked the man who was wearing a dress, but nobody checked the woman who was wearing a man clothes. Nobody checked her at all. They passed her off as being a tomboy. Right, they passed her off as being a tomboy. You thought that was cute. Oh, you know, she's just a little, she's just a little rugged. Nah. You pick her on football. Too. 
No. Now she's after your wife. Now she's your competition now. 